dangerous. If you get caught, you could get arrested or even worse. I need your help to hiding my family. You need to take your time to think it through. No, I don't. What do I do? You're both playing these two key figures in history, Anne Frank and Margot Frank. What was the most important thing to you as actors when it came to taking on these roles and telling an honest story? Taking on Anne Frank, I mean, she she's very much known. Everybody knows who Anne Frank is. Uh, so for me, I, I really wanted to take forward how her true self and how she speaks within her diary and how feisty she is and how strong she is and powerful and loyal. I mean, she she's opinionated and so amazing. And I really wanted to take that forward with me. So for me as an actor, I, I made the decision to to really take her fieriness on board. And a small light really helped me with that because the writing portrayed Anne as her true self as well. So it really went very researched and the script really went hand in hand with it. It was so nice to bring it to life when I was reading the scripts and then being able to be on set and doing it. It was really nice. Yeah, what was hard for my research mm. was that there wasn't so much out on Margot except for other people's perspectives yeah. of her. And I remember every time I would look Margot up online or read something about her, it would always describe her in two words as maybe intelligent and sweet. And I always tried to go back to the fact that she's a teenage girl during these horrible circumstances mm -hmm. and, and, and try and really put myself in, in her shoes. And so I would take those perspectives. I, I took yeah. Anne's diary and I, I actually wrote out Margot's perspective on a lot of the things that were going on in, inside the annex. And that really helped me to step into her shoes. Yeah. Also, my grandma is a Holocaust survivor, and when I got this role, I was able to watch her story, and that was so special. And I remember her talking about the fear of the Holocaust, but also the moments of hope in her story. She was so optimistic when telling it, and I remember all of the hope just went right back to our story and how neat was that hope for the Frank family. Yeah. And when she took Margot to go to the annex and on, on their own, that was such a, an amazing powerful. and powerful moment. Yeah. And she stood up in the face of all of this darkness. And so I think that all of those combined, taking all that research and you know personal relations, yeah. I think that's what helped me to step into Margot's shoes. All right, listen to me. You can't go back. You can't run. And you can't show any fear. Let's do this. We were familiar with Meep just from our interest in the diary and from visiting the Anne Frank Museum. And, and what struck us was that this young woman who was newly married instantly said yes to her boss when he said, will you help hide my family? And it was like, why would she? What, what made her make that decision that she really didn't understand the consequences of and and th there were all sorts of things that happened in her life that uh, she didn't know how to do this she wasn't a spy she was just a normal person from Grey's Anatomy to a small light um, what are some of the advantages of working as a team that you think has granted you such success we just get to do what we love and we get to do it together. Um, we have shared interests. You know, we traveled to Amsterdam. We found this story together. You know, I'm up like Googling all night long and, and sharing tidbits with him. Um, so it's just uh, what we like to do. It's stuff we like to do together. Susanna also is like, you can text Susanna at three in the morning, she'll answer immediately. <laughs> and you can start, you know, sharing information with her. So we're sort of a dream team in that way, too. As a director, too, there's, um, you know, usually it, Joan and Tony, you know, it's their show and, and I'm, I'm working with them to start, start the train moving the right way. Um, but then oftentimes, if you kind of come on and do the first few episodes of something, you leave and then you're sort of like, well, I guess I'll watch the show when it comes out and see where it went after I, you know, yeah. went off. And with this, I didn't, I just didn't have a moment's doubt that it would be, um, you know, that it would, 
that it would end up great and that it would end up like of a piece. And that's not something that is always the case, you know? Yeah. So it was nice to sort of know that, like all, all of us, you know, you can tap in and tap out and, and focus elsewhere and then you end up with something really, you know, um, uh, complete and singular. The eight part series premieres Monday, May 1st at 9, 8 central on National Geographic with two back to back episodes. New episodes of A Small Light will debut every Monday at 9, 8 central on National Geographic and will stream the next day on Disney Plus and Hulu. I'm Sari Cohen. I'll see you next time. We can't save everyone. But if I don't try, I don't think I'll be able to live with myself. Turn darkness into